Black to the Future, a comic by Ms. Mercedes. Fire extinguisher. Let's go spy on them. Who are those strangers? I don't know. Stranger danger. Tonight, we're going to break in and steal those computers. And burn it. No evidence. OMG, we got to stop them. Oh, no. We're going to stay after school and set up the plan. Where are those computers? Nothing's here. Let's burn this place. Nice work, kids. Your fire extinguisher invention is going to help save the world. Thomas J. Martin improved the fire extinguisher, making the reservoir attached to it, making the water doze flames. His patent for his invention was granted on March 26, 1872. Mr. Ice Cream Man! It was a scorching hot summer day. Who is that? Hey you, come try these flavors. Wow! wow. Awesome! OMG! Life is like ice cream. Enjoy it before it melts. Augustus Jackson was born on April 16, 1808 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He is named the father of ice cream for innovating ice cream by adding salt to the ice, which made it more flavorful. He served as the chef at the White House during the 1820s. He made ice cream more flavorful by adding ingredients such as fruit. His recipes and ingredients were so tasteful, he left the White House and created his own catering business. He made and sold different ice cream flavors in tin cans, which he distributed to other ice cream parlors. Elevator. One night in the year 1999, three kids were playing Ding Dong Ditch. Let's go see where that light is coming from. Should we go in? YOLO, let's go. Push a button. Ah! The elevator opens into year one, showing Egypt, Africa. Push 2020. Corona! No mask. Trump 2020. No vaccine. Justice for Breonna Taylor. Black Lives Matter. I can't breathe. Let's go back to 1999. Alexander Miles was born on May 18, 1838, in Circleville, Ohio. It is believed that Alexander got the idea for his elevator door after his daughter Grace accidentally fell down a shaft, almost ending her life. This led to him designing a flexible belt attachment to the elevator cage and drums positioned to indicate if the elevator has reached a floor. His innovation of the elevator saved lives and made elevators safer. Laser eyes. A family had a baby girl that was born with laser eyes. These should protect her eyes. Ha ha! <laughs> Look at those huge glasses. I wish for normal eyes. Every night she prayed for normal eyes. Earthquake! The earthquake trapped them inside the school. We're trapped! Help! She used her laser eyes to break out of the school and save everyone. Dr. Patricia Bath was born on November 4, 1942 in Harlem, New York. She excelled in chemistry and won a scholarship from the National Science Foundation. This led to her working on research projects studying connections between cancer, nutrition, and stress. She received a degree in Bachelor's of Art from Hunter College and graduated with honors from Howard University College of Medicine. She would go on to receive many awards, but her greatest achievement was inventing the laser cataract surgery. This invention helps cure blindness using a laser. Portable refrigeration. Prepare for safety. A meteor is heading towards Earth. Dad, let's use the cooling machine. Slosh. Thank you for saving us. How did you come up with this? My son believed it would work. Frederick McKinley Jones was born on May 17, 1893 in Cincinnati, Ohio. He started working at age 11 as a cleaning boy and by 14 an automobile mechanic. He served in the Army in World War I in the all-black unit, but was promoted to engineer after being recognized for his mechanical skills. After serving, he was a mechanic and self-taught in electronics. He built a transmitter for a radio station and improved the sound equipment for films. In 1938, 
he designed a portable air cooling refrigeration for trucks, which became one of his greatest inventions. The portable refrigeration made transferring perishable food easier. In World War II, the portable cooling unit became very important as it preserved blood, medicine, and food for army hospitals. Video games. One night, a boy was playing a football video game. He fell asleep and had a dream. He was inside the video game. I can't wait for my dreams to come true. Wake up! Gerald Jerry Anderson Lawson was born on December 1st, 1940 in Brooklyn, New York. Education was important and a priority his parents instilled in him. His first grade teacher noticed something special about him and said he had the ability to be influential like George Washington Carver. As a teenager, he earned money by repairing TVs. At age 13, he built his own radio station from parts he bought at a local electronic stores. He attended Queens College and City of College of New York. In 1970, he got a job working in sales as an engineer consultant at Fairchild Semiconductor in San Francisco. There, he created an early coin-operated arcane game called Demolition Derby in his garage. He would later create the Fairchild Channel F console, the first at-home video game console. This console was also the first system you could remove or change games in the system, creating a game library and paving the way for future gaming systems such as Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, and Xbox. Jerry and Ron Jones were the only black members of the Homebrew Computer Club, which also included Apple founders Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Jerry died April 9th of 2011. He leaves a legacy in the technology and gaming world. Magic hair. A young girl had long, beautiful hair that was magic. The sun made her hair more powerful. She used plants such as aloe vera, shea butter, and mixed coconut oil to create a secret hair potion. The evil witch was so jealous of the little girl's hair, she went home and made a poisonous potion. When the little girl was asleep, the evil witch switched potions. The next day was Wacky Hair Day. Nice hair! Thank you. The evil witch thought the little girl used her poisonous potion that messed up her hair. The little girl thinks the witch is being nice and gives her a new bottle of the secret hair potion. <laughs> The evil witch is happy to finally get the little girl's secret hair potion. The evil witch puts it in her hair, and it's the poisonous potion. All her hair falls out, and the evil witch was never seen again. Madam C.J. Walker, born Sarah Breedlove, was born on December 23, 1867 in Delta, Louisiana. She had a challenging childhood, being orphaned at age 7. She only had three months of education she received at Sunday school. When she became a mother, she was determined to give her daughter a better life and education. She suffered bad dandruff and baldness due to lack of hygiene, care, and poor diet. During this time, many Americans lacked indoor plumbing, central heating, and electricity. She learned about hair care from her brothers and worked for a local hair saleswoman. She began making her own hair care products and started to sell them. Being a hairdresser, she also invented the hot comb, which straightened hair. She was a phenomenal entrepreneur and became the first black woman millionaire. Her hair products can still be found under Shea Moisture brand. Super Soaker! A boy in his treehouse grabs his super soaker. He sees his sister jump roping with her friends. He sprays her hair and her hair poofs up. It's war! <laughs> Get him! Her and her friends transform into camel gear. Gotcha! Oh no! They capture him. No, not my super soaker! Lonnie Johnson was born in Mobile, Alabama on October 6, 1949. He was always curious, loved learning, and inventing new things. He attended Williamson High School, which was an all-black school. There, he represented his school in a science fair and created a robot named the Linux. He was the only black student in the competition, and he won first prize. He attended Tuskegee University, historical black college university. 
and earned a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and a master's degree in nuclear engineering. He went on to work for Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the U.S. Air Force, and NASA. In his spare time, he was working on an environmentally friendly heat pump that later became the Super Soaker invention. The Super Soaker became the number one selling toy in the 1990s, selling over one billion in sales today. The Super Soaker remains one of the top toys ever made. Security system. Golden Time Cook Andresa was baking an apple pie. She put the pie in the window to cool off. When she came back, the pie was gone. The next day, she baked another pie. After 15 minutes, when she came back, the pie was gone again. Andresa orders and sets up a security camera to figure out what is happening to her pies. She rebakes an apple pie and sets it in the window and watches the security cam. She sees a woman comes and takes the pie. She invites the woman inside and teaches her how to make the pie. Marie Van Britten Brown was born on October 30th, 1922 in Jamaica, Queens, New York. She worked as a nurse and her husband was an electrician. Her husband worked nights and the crime in their neighborhood concerned them about her safety. This led to her and her husband creating a security system. The security system they created let you see and communicate with those who was inside of the home to whoever was outside of the home. She also innovated the system by adding the option to unlock the door remotely and a button alarming emergency responders. Her invention is still used today and has saved many lives. Samaji Shepard, designer of Wasted Life clothing brand. He started making clothes after creating a shirt at his cousin's t-shirt shop. When people seen his shirt, they wanted one. This led to many more things being made, such as hats, jackets, bags, outfits. The main logo is of a star with the open mouth and X eyes, which was inspired by one of his tattoos. Many mistaken the logo for a drunken star. That's where the brand's name Wasted Life comes from. Samaji says a vision without a purpose is a wasted life. Lavelle Timberlake is a designer of Mab Mimes clothing brand. He started designing t-shirts with quotes as a hobby for extra cash. But after taking a business class, he decided to create an actual brand. The name he chose was Mab Mimes. The name was inspired by his MySpace name, his abstract mind. Mab stands for mellifluous, abstract, beautiful. Lavelle says everything comes from our heart, soul, and mind. Anything is possible. You can accomplish anything, no matter what. Believe in yourself, your passion, and your energy. Keep a mad mind. Cameron Smith is the designer of Wonder clothing line. He became intrigued with the process of designing clothes after working for Guess clothing brand. He came up with the name Wonder, which means the thrill of not knowing. He says, in life, we as people wonder all the time, wondering how our day will go or wondering what the outcome will be from a decision we made. Ebony Yarbrough is the owner of Bougie's Boutique. She opened her first store in St. Paul's Eastside community. Her business thrived, which led to her relocating to bigger spaces. She loved making her customers feel stylish, so started designing her own clothes and shoes. Bougie's Boutique was the first Black-owned storefront at Rosedale Mall. Her business continues to flourish and just opened a location at the Mall of America. Destiny Roberts is an artistic visionary expressing herself through music, videography, and clothing. She was born into a fashion trend family. Her inspiration came from her mother, whom she calls the Thrift Queen. Destiny admired her older sister who designed her own clothes and was a trendsetter rocking stylish, natural hairstyles. As she grew older, Destiny always expressed herself through music. She started off selling clothes as merch when she released new music. One day, doodling, she drew her logo, Desi Ra. Desi, her nickname, and Ra for her dope creativity she gives to the world. Posting the logo, someone said, put it on a shirt and I'll buy it. This led to the Desi Ra brand being established. Golden Time. Michael and Stephanie Wright opened Golden Time Coffee Cafe in March of the year 2000. They were the first Black-owned coffee shop in St. Paul's Rondo community. Each year on the second Saturday of September, they host an annual jazz fest. Two Scoops is a family-owned business ran by Brian and Ardella Wright. They are the first black-owned ice cream parlor in St. Paul, Minnesota. 
two scoops open for business in the spring of 2020. During that time, the pandemic and protests revolving George Floyd were happening. They felt the community needed ice cream. Brian says, what the world needs right now is ice cream. It makes everyone happy and brings them together. Minnesota Venom is a competitive traveling flag football program. Their program conditions its athletes through intense physical skills training. Coach Mack says, we want kids in the inner city to be able to compete at the highest level and have resources without having to leave their community. They are located in St. Paul, Minnesota. Margaret Sullivan is a civil rights activist and journalist. She advocates for women's rights and equality for minorities in the education and justice system. In her community, she helps organize events and reports live news.